Welcome to our Tuesday night time in the Word of God. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us, and I want to thank you for your prayers and your support. Uh, and I always encourage you to continue to continue to continue to pray for us, uh, because we are convinced uh, that the prayers of the righteous avail it much. They have much power, and so we ask that you will continue uh, to pray for us and to support us. Also, for those of you who are interested in attending uh, service on the campus, uh, as you know, October 11th, beginning at 10 a.m., starting on that Sunday, worship will begin on the campus. Uh, so if you're interested in attending, please email us, go to the web page and click the little email link, uh, and email how many will attend with you so that we can make appropriate arrangements so that everybody can worship uh, uh, safely. We are walking in faith, definitely, but we also want to walk in wisdom. Uh, and then finally, as a last reminder, uh, just be encouraging your brothers and your sisters. And I say that based on Romans chapter 14 uh, that, that we kind of looked at when we first announced uh, opening the campus, that some of our brothers and sisters are going to continue to watch and serve virtually online. And we're going to pray for you and love you and stay connected to you that some of our brothers and sisters are going to come on campus uh, and we're going to pray and love and support you. Uh, but we will always be one church. We will not be two churches, a virtual church and an on-site church. The goal is, Lord willing, in time, it will be safe for all to attend. Uh, and we are willing to do that, whatever we have to do. So even if the numbers get too high uh, in attendance, we, will, we have plans of how we could alternate Sundays so that whoever wants to attend, whenever you want to attend, you can attend. So, again, if you're interested, please uh, use the email link. Uh, tonight, we're going to uh, study, as you can see, are you a role model? And I'm already answering the question for you, yes. Uh, and the text we're, we're going to jump off with is Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1 in our devotional study. So I'm going to read Ephesians 5, verse 1. Uh, then we will pray and we will jump into our study. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, in verse 2, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we're so thankful for your kindness to us on this day. Uh, we remain with breath in our body at this moment only because of your mercy and only because of your goodness towards us. And in light of your goodness, Father, we are sensitive to our own failures and our own sin. We ask that you will forgive us for our sin. Forgive us, Father. Help us to uh, be sensitive, to be repentful, and to rejoice in the assurance of your forgiveness that if we confess, you are just and faithful to forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Thank you. Now, Father, as we spend time in your word, Speak to us by the power of your spirit. Let us hear your voice. Be challenged by what we hear. And then be changed by the power of your spirit through your word so that we may be pleasing unto you. Change our life tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are you a role model? And here's the answer, emphatically, Yes. I am not a role model attitude. Uh, some of us remember this from years ago when Charles Barkley was in his height. Uh, and if you know anything about Charles Barkley, he was not the nicest player. He was known for uh, backing people down for 24 seconds. Uh, he was known for sort of being a bully, 
pushing, shoving. He was known for foul language publicly in the middle of the game, loud. Uh, and he was known for even, I believe he spit on somebody. Uh, he was a rough kind of player. And every now and then people challenged Sir Charles about his behavior on the court. And they would use the idea, presenting him the idea that there are children that's watching you, there are teenagers that's watching you. Shouldn't you consider yourself a role model? Uh, Charles' response to that was, I am not a role model. I am not paid to be a role model. I am paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Parents should be role models. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. And the truth is, there is some truth to what Sir Charles saying. But from another perspective, Charles was making it clear that I am going to be Charles and you should look at me in any kind of way to try to find some type of model or pattern to follow. That's not my job. That's not what I'm trying to do. This same type of attitude sometimes is modeled and stated even within the Christian church. So amongst Christians sometimes, these are generic statements you hear. Talk about being a role model and how other believers should look and observe your life and my life. Some of the responses sometimes is, I go to church for Jesus, not people. So how I live my life, how you live your life, don't really matter because I don't go to church for that. I go for Jesus and I'm not worried about people. Uh, another statement, I don't follow men, I only follow God. Uh, then you have others, I don't need the church. I can read the Bible and live for Jesus without being part of a church. We, we've heard this kind of stuff. I know you've heard this one. As long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Old, old gospel song. A new rap that's kind of been, had come out earlier this year, where the rapper, just, the gist of his song was, Try Jesus, don't try me, because I fight. And then, I trust Jesus, I'm a believer in Jesus, but don't look at me to learn what would Jesus do. Don't look at me to try to find out what would Jesus do. You just look at Jesus and trust Jesus like I trust Jesus. It's the same attitude that Charles Barkley had. I am not your role model. The word in the Bible, mimeomea, from which we get our English word to mimic, to follow as a pattern, to be like or peer like, to copy is used 11 times in the New Testament. Now the forms change based on grammar. But this Greek word and its conjugations are used 11 times in the New Testament. And remember, it's where we get our English word to mimic or to imitate, to copy. Out of the 11 times it's used, one time it is used directly of God. And that's the text that we read. Therefore be imitators, mimic, follow as a pattern, be like, appear like, copy God as his beloved children. So you get the image as little boys, See their dad cutting the yard? Guess what they want to do? They want to get out there and they want to cut the yard. And little boys see their dad wash cars and normally when they're small, what they want to do? I want to go out there and wash the car with dad. They want to mimic, 
copy their father. God said the, says the same thing. Be imitators, mimic, appear like, follow the pattern, copy God as his beloved children. And in this context, how do, are we to copy God as his children? Walk in love. We walk in love. What does that look like? Sacrificial. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Notice, imitate God by walking in love, looking like Jesus who loves sacrificially, not because the person deserves it, but as a sweet sacrifice to God. One time used directly of God. Here is the push-up tonight. Ten times out of the eleven, this word to mimic, follow as a pattern, be like, appear like, to copy, is not used of God, but it is used of other or others or another believer in Jesus. Ten times, this word is used of believers looking at other believers or another believers and mimicking, following their pattern, being like them, copying them, 10 out of the 11 times when this is used. The clear implication is the Lord's expectation for believers is to live for him to the degree that other believers can follow their example and lifestyle that honors the Lord that other believers can watch how you live and follow your pattern and copy you in on their journey to be pleasing to God. What role models we should not imitate? We, we should not uh, imitate, I'm sorry. What role models we should not imitate? First, we should not imitate the pattern, the lifestyle, the practices of the ungodly culture. The Christian church needs to hear that today because we want to be like the culture. We want the culture to think we're cool. We want to talk like them, look like them, dress like them, believe like them, act like them, agree with them because we want them to think our Jesus is, is cool. And all through scripture, God's people are told not to be like people who don't know him. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, when you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you, so God brings them into the promised land, and all the nations around them are ungodly. They don't know Yahweh. Look what he tells them. You shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. Notice how God describes their practices. Vulnerable, heathenish, ungodly, unfit, unworthy. Not an option. Because who does not approve of them? Your Lord. So he tells his people, don't imitate, copy, follow the culture the ungodly culture that you live in. He did not take Israel and pull them out of an ungodly culture. He would have to pull them out of the world. But while you are in the world, we are often told you are not of the world. So you do not practice, copy, follow, hang on to, look like, dress like, sound like, pattern yourself behind the ungodly culture that you live in. We don't imitate the ungodly culture and we don't imitate beliefs and actions you know are evil. You know it's wrong. 3 John 1 verse 11, Beloved, do not imitate, mimic, copy, follow as a pattern, evil, kakos, that which is bad. You know it's evil and that word kakos simply means bad, wrong, inappropriate. Don't copy, imitate, 
So who or what should we copy? God's expectation to be and follow role models. God expects for his people to be and to follow role models, to imitate them. What are some ways we do that? First, with loving attitudes toward other believers. Third John 1, 9 through 11, John writes, I wrote something to the church, but the Iophis, who love to be first among them, does not accept what we say. For this reason, if I come, I will call attention to his deeds, which he does, unjustly accusing us with wicked words. And not satisfied with this, he himself does not receive the brethren either, and he forbids those who desire to do so and put them out of the church. So you have this guy who is in church, who's part of the church that John is writing to. He's arrogant. He doesn't listen to the, the truth, the teaching of the apostles. Uh, he unjustly accuses of other Christians. Uh, people who don't agree with him, he just trying to get them out of the church. Uh, he doesn't receive the brethren. And now John tells this church, beloved, do not imitate what is evil, that's that context, but what is good. Don't mimic and copy what you know is wrong in the context of somebody who is clearly unloving. He's going to try to pull you into his clique. He's going to try to pull you into his circle. No, don't imitate that. Don't copy that. Don't follow that pattern. You imitate what is good. How do you know? The one who does good is of God. The one who does evil has not seen God. Listen to that harsh language John uses. The one who does evil has not seen God. If you read John's letters, particularly in John 8, this is a way of John saying, this person is not a believer. That's his way of saying that in his letters. So you imitate what is good, how? By having a loving attitude toward other believers. Not getting caught up in those who cause dissension. Not following those who always have a problem with everything and mad about something with somebody in the church. No. Don't imitate what is evil, but what is good. Uh, we should also imitate other believers when we see a joyful response to the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 1 says, You also became imitators of us, and of the Lord, having received the word, how in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, they became imitators. Notice of us. You were following our pattern and how you heard God's word with joy and with joyful obedience, even in the context of tribulation. And you saw other believers rejoicing in joyful obedience in the word of God. You, Paul is saying you saw how we did that and you followed our example. You copied us. So a joyful response to the word of God. Uh, we are to mimic other believers as they endure faith in tough times. When we watch how other believers go through hard times with faith in God, which is unwavering trust in God, we should watch their examples and copy their examples. 1 Corinthians 4, 11 through verse 16. This present hour, we are both. Notice, at this very moment when he's writing this, to this present hour, we are both hungry and thirsty and are poorly clothed and are roughly treated and are homeless and we toil, working with our own hands. When we are reviled, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure. When we are slandered, we try to conciliate. We have become as the scum of the earth, the dregs of all things, even until right now. This is the Apostle Paul, considered the greatest Christian to live, and listen to how he's living, his experience. I do not write these things to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children, 
For if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. His point, I led you to Christ. Therefore, I exhort you, be what? Imitators of me. That how I respond to difficult times in life, watch how I'm living. Watch how I'm responding, being hungry and being thirsty and not having and being poorly clothed, not having clothes and being treated bad and being homeless and working with our own hands. And being talked about but still blessing people. And being persecuted but staying in the faith, enduring. Watch how I'm living this life and you follow my, you copy my pattern. You follow my example. You imitate. You all imitate me. First Thessalonians, for you brethren became imitators, notice of the other churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. How did this church imitate, copy, mimic the churches in Judea? For you also endured the same sufferings at the hand of your own countrymen, even as they did from the Jews. So the church in Judea, which is all Jews, the, 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 the Pharisees and the leaders in Jews were always attacking the church in Judea. And even in Thessalonica, those Christians were being what? Persecuted. And he says, you are imitating them. So now we have noticed body of believers that's following in the same pattern of other body of believers. Mimicking them. Imitating them. God expects us expects us to be and follow role models. Dedicated service for God to God's people. That we watch how other people serve God and we follow their example. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name in having ministered and is still ministering to the saints. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end so that you will not be sluggish but imitators, mimic, copy, follow, followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So notice what he says. Follow those who through faith and patience, they are looking for these promises that's coming from God, not in this life, but in the one to come. And in looking forward to that, they continue to serve with diligence. And he says, that's what you do. Look at how they are doing it. And you continue to serve and do the same. Dedicated service for God to God's people. Where we watch how other people have served the Lord. And we seek to follow in their footsteps. With the same faithfulness. God's expectation for you to be and follow role models. How, what are you supposed to mimic, follow? A pursuit of God's glory and salvation of others. We watch the passion that others have for a pursuit of God's glory and the salvation of others and we mimic that. We follow that pattern. Whether then, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Give no offense either to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of the many, so that they may be saved. Notice, do all things with the glory of God. Don't seek your own profit. But the prophet of the many, why? So that they may be saved. That's Paul said, this is how I live. Pursuit of God's glory and the salvation of others. And now he says in the very next verse, be imitators of me. Follow me. And just as I also am of Christ. 
Why can Paul say that? Because Jesus, you read the gospel, Jesus always said, I have come to do the will of my Father. I have come in pursuit of the revealing of the glory of God. Jesus, second reason Jesus always says he came, I have come to give my life as a ransom for many. Notice both goals, Jesus in pursuit of the glory of God, the revealing of God. Jesus has come to bring salvation to others. And Paul says, I am following Jesus. How? I am in pursuit doing all things for the glory of God. And I am pursuing all things for the salvation that they may be saved, the salvation of others. And he says now, Watch how I live this life this way, and you follow my path. God's center priorities. We should mimic God's center priorities in the lives of other people. Watch how they prioritize and value God in their lives above everything else and follow their patterns. Copy them. Philippians 3, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. This is to the, remember who's talking. This is Paul again. And Paul is saying at this stage in his walk, he had not made it there yet. He st he's still growing in his walk with Jesus. I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But here's the one thing I do. I forget what lies behind and I reach forward to what lies ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Notice the goal that Paul is pressing for is the call of God that's in Christ. He's pressing towards a goal that's rooted in Jesus. And if you read his writings in Colossians 3, Paul makes it clear that it has nothing to do with pursuing anything in this world. It has everything with pursuing everything else that pertains to the glory of God. It's that eschatological hope. It's that eschatological purpose. It's that eschatological salvation. Everything in pursuit of the person of Jesus, the Christ of God. You know he says this in Philippians 1, to live is Christ, to die is gain. This is what he means, the outward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, this word means mature, have this attitude. This is the same attitude you ought to have. If you're mature, this is the attitude, this, is your, this becomes your priority. Not your comfort and convenience and your pleasures, but know your pursuit of the greatest value, eternal value, which is the call of God in Christ, rooted in the person of Jesus. If you're mature, this is your attitude. God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by that same standard to which we have attained. Brethren, Join in following my example and observe those, not just mine, look what he says, and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. So notice what he's saying. You're not just looking at Jesus, you're looking at me. You're not just looking at me, you're looking at others who live the same way and you live like they live. You follow their example, their pursuit for the highest supreme value, which is this upward call of God that's in Jesus, this pursuit of Jesus the Christ. Uh, you look at how others live that way and be inspired by it and follow, not, not just be inspired, move to action to pattern your life after other godly people. And that means making different choices and decisions that they are making that demonstrates their passion 
their pursuit of the overall call of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, let me say something. Every now and then, there are believers, some guys I disciple who've made these statements, who say, you know, you know, Terrence, I want to be able to talk the way you talk about Jesus and really mean. And when they make a statement like that, I'm thinking about some men who I hear talk about Jesus. And I'm thinking the same thing. I want to be able to talk about Jesus with the sincerity and with the passion and with the knowledge, with the clear experimental knowledge, the way they talk about him. There's people that's asking me that, and there are men that I listen to that I'm thinking the same thing. How they talk about him as though he's standing right there physically in front of him. All the time. And I hear that and, and, I, and how they shape their lives around him. It's intimate and emphatic. I hear them and I, and I watch their examples. And that's how it's passed. That's how it's been passed. For the last 2,000 years. Follow my examples and observe those who walk according to the patterns you have in us. Um, another word that kind of follows this is the word tupas, hupas, literally, it means blow by, by, by metonymy. It's the impression made by the blow of a mortar as a figure formed by the blow of a hammer or chisel, an image, a, a chiseled image or statue is translated as an example. It's the idea if I had some clay, some Play-Doh or some clay, and I took the clay and I balled it up, put it in this hand, and I took my fist and punched it, you will see the imprint of my fist in the clay you will see a pattern of my fist in the clay. You will see a chiseled image of my fist in the clay. And if I let it get hard, it will become a statue of my fist in the clay. That's the word. For example, it's a pattern that's set in stone that you are to follow. Notice how it's used. An example to other believers of their lifestyle choices and actions. Everywhere you see this word, you're going to see it used in, 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 the, in these two places, referring to other believers. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather, this is Paul talking to Timothy, notice, but rather in speech, in your conversation, in your conduct, in your behavior, in your love, in your faith, in your purity, in your morality. Show yourself an example, a chiseled image, like a statue, an imprint of those who believe. You should be an example, an image, a statue in the world of what a believer looks like in the world and how you talk and how you behave and how you love people and how you trust God and in, and in the moral decisions you make, in, the, in the, what, how you live your life morally and ethically, pure. You should be an example. That someone should be able to look at you and say, that's what a Jesus follower looks like. And how they talk, how they behave, how they love, how they trust, and, and what they consider ethical and what they consider moral. That's an example. Titus 2, in all things, notice in all things, show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity in doctrine dignified set apart dignified 
When something is dignified, it's what? It's something that's kind of put on a pedestal. It's not set with everything else. It's kind of, it's set apart. It's dignified. You ought to be an example, an image, a statue of good deeds. Philippians 4, 9. The things you have learned, listen to this. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen, notice, in me. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say in Jesus. He says in me. Practice these things. And the God of peace shall be with you. You have a man telling other believers, live the way I live, learn the way I learn, believe the way I believe, watch my life, and if you watch how I live, you, and live the same way, you will experience God. What does that say about this man? Let me remind you who this man is. Is this man. The man that said that is the man that said this. It's the same man that said, I, I haven't reached it yet. I haven't made it yet. But I'm chasing it. My life goal is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pursuing it. My value system is rooted in Jesus. And all of my life, every aspect of my life, is being shaped and conformed in pursuit of the living, resurrected Jesus. So follow my example here. Practice these things. And if you live that way, you will experience God. And that's believers watching other believers. So, God calls you, just like these men, to follow and be a role model. Remember, 11 times that word is used. 10 times it's used of believers following other believers. That never changed. That's the pattern of Christianity. God calls you to follow up role models and to be a role model. The patterns that we should follow, be like, or copy is the consistent spiritual lifestyle of other believers. Your, in your in scriptures, in your copy of the word of God, we are given in the scriptures true stories of the lives of men and women of God whom God has determined to use, some of them bad, some of them evil. There are people in the Bible we learn what to do. There are people in the Bible we learn what not to do. That we may learn who God is and how we ought to respond to him and live our lives pleasing to him. The majority of the scriptures are narratives. The majority of your Bible, 85% of your Bible are stories. So that you can see how these real historical people lived in the world, responded to the same categories of life that, that, that never changes, that we are responding to. Watch how they live. Watch how God revealed himself. What, watch what God revealed about himself and about righteousness. And now we learn how to respond from these other people. That's what Hebrews 11 is. The Hall of Faith. We watch how all of these people lived out faith. Some who had faith and received the promise. Some who had faith and never received the promise. But the goal of both whose faith was not receiving or not receiving or not receiving. It was their confidence in God. The goal and the reward was their faith in God. In the New Testament period, Beginning with the life of Christ, after choosing his disciples, he will call them to be with him, remember, and observe him so that they can observe and practice what it requires to be a servant of God. Remember what Jesus is doing with the disciples. We've been studying the gospel of Mark. He called this men to do what the first year and a half, two years, all they did was sit around with him and watch him. 
They watched him. They listened to him. They watched him. They listened to him. And what is he doing? He's giving them a pattern to follow so that they may be able to go out and do the same thing, mimic him, imitate him. And do what? Teach others to do the same thing. Because the next group not going to have Jesus to watch and to imitate. They're going to have the disciples. And the group that comes to the disciples not going to have Jesus. They're going to have the, 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 the group that was trained by the disciples. And it's been following their way for 2,000 years. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. This is Paul talking to Titus and Timothy who never saw Jesus. He doesn't say follow Jesus. He says, watch me as I follow Jesus and you follow the patterns of things you see and you will experience the God of peace. God called to follow and be a role model, implication. This biblical truth highlights the necessity of consistent, genuine church relationships and fellowship. You cannot do this apart from God's people. You were never intended to know God, to grow in God, to pursue God, to develop in God apart from God's people. Why? Because it is within the context of God's people where you learn, grow, develop, you mimic, you follow the patterns, you learn from, you imitate so that others can watch and mimic you and imitate you as you grow and develop. That's why in Hebrews 10, he says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Notice we are doing this to one another. Not forsaking assembling ourselves together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day, the day is a reference to the return of Jesus drawing near. There must be consistent, genuine church relationships and fellowship, not just, hey, brother and sister. No, we have to know each other. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, said, we have to do life together. Life together. With genuine, sincere relationships where we can talk Bible and theology and we can say, hey, you know that ain't right. Or we can say, congratulations, brother. Or we can weep and mourn one another. And iron can sharpen iron. And we can love one another and not be offended. And we can wreck one another and not become prideful. And we can encourage one another and receive it with joy. And then thirdly, or fulfill God's call to follow and be a role model. The challenge for us today is this. We must honestly and sincerely examine our own, we must examine our own life and, and our own life and ask ourselves to what extent, that's, that's what, to what extent, you gotta examine your own life and you gotta ask yourself, to what extent could I take, could you take another young believer and tell them to imitate you as you follow Christ. To what extent could you meet a young believer, meet a young Christian, another sister in the church, another brother in the church, and say, hey, man, you know what? Let's spend time together. And, and you watch how I live for Jesus, and you follow my path. You watch how I, I handle my family, you follow my pattern. You watch how, how, how I handle my spouse. And you follow my pattern. You do, you watch how I do it for the glory of God. And you follow, you watch how you watch my devotional life. And you watch my service, how I serve the Lord through serving his people. You watch how I give and watch how I share. You watch my pursuit of Jesus. Watch how not don't just watch how I talk about God being first. Watch how I organize my priorities and my values in life in pursuit of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And you do the same thing with your life. You've got to be able to examine your life. 
Could you do that? Are you doing that? Should you be doing that? It's obvious you should be. We should be. So let me just go ahead and address the cop out. Here's the cop out. I'm not perfect. I still make mistakes. No, Pastor Terrell, I can't do that because I ain't, I'm not perfect and I still make Paul wasn't either. We read in Philippians 3, Paul says, I have not attained it. I do not consider myself as having attained it. But here's the one thing I do. I forget what's behind me and I'm pressing on towards the overcall of God. It has never been about uh, 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 being perfect. It has always been about pursuing. Discipleship involves, discipling others involves transparency. That those whom you disciple ought to see sometimes the cracks. They will, if you're really discipling someone, they'll see your cracks. They'll be able to know when you're weak. You're a sharer. You're, you're going to tell them. You're show to them. And then you're going to show them how to overcome them in your pursuit. So you can't use the cap out because nobody is perfect, but we're all pursuing. And while in pursuing Jesus, we're watching others who have gone on before us. And what else we're doing? We're reaching back and grabbing someone and say, as I am imitating righteousness and holiness and pursuit of the greatest value in Jesus Christ, I am bringing someone else along to do the same thing. And that's more than just the people in your house. So please don't, that includes the people in your house, but that's more than just the people in your house. The call. We have been called, and not just preachers. Every believer have been called to make disciples, not just converts. Our goal, the biblical goal, is not to just get people saved. The command in Matthew 28 is to do what? Go and make disciples. Disciples are simply people who follow Jesus. How are they going to follow Jesus? They are following you. As you follow Jesus. Because here's the truth. Here's the, the core of the truth. They are watching and learning regardless. That whether, whether you are intentionally causing others to, 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 to pursue the greatest eternal value in the person of Jesus, or whether you are unintentionally causing others to stumble in their walk, they're watching. Other Christians are watching how you live, the choices you make the decisions you make, what you value. They may not ever say anything to you, but they're watching. Yes, your children are watching. Your, your, your family is watching. Your co-workers are watching. As you, as you say, I'm a Jesus follower. I trust in Jesus. I'm saved. Yeah, they're watching whether you think they're imitating you or not, whether you want them to imitate you. Watching, and you are giving them a lens on how to view Jesus himself. So, be imitators of God. Be imitators of one another. Um, I learned a long time ago that it's impossible to live the Christian life by myself and on my own. And every, when I attempted to live that way, I always wound up discouraged and failing miserably. But when I learned what discipleship was, when submitting my life to other godly people within my local fellowship, whom I can trust, I began to grow. And as I watch other men, men are right in front of me, men in history, the Jonathan Atlas, the, 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 the John MacArthur's, the John Pipers, the, 
the John Calvins, a lot of Johns there. Uh, St. Augustine, uh, Athanasius, Harry Leaf, Fred Holiday, uh, Lee Skinner, Philip Johnson, men who have helped shape who I am as a Christian. I thank God for all that Jesus has done in my life. And I thank God for these men that Jesus has used in my life so that I can see what it's like to become a godly man and imitate, follow their patterns. None of them are perfect. All of them are in pursuit. And I should be imitating them in their pursuit of Christ. And others should be able to look at how I live my life. Where I could turn back to them and say, imitate me as I follow Jesus. The same call is there for you. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Uh, thank you for your power, your strength, your truth. Right now, some of us are going to look for reasons why this can't be true about them. Convict, challenge, change, encourage. And help us to pursue the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. And let that be our pursuit where we can turn back to others and tell them, follow me as I follow Christ. We thank you for the privilege to represent you in the short time you give us on this planet. Help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a good night.